Hi everyone, welcome back to Online Classroom Jekudyo. In this video, we are going to look at 1.5 Density. First of all, Jekudyo would like to ask, do you know how to swim? Look at this person. He floats on water easily. Do you know where this is? This is actually the Dead Sea. And why is he floating even though he's not trying to swim or trying to float? Actually, people can float very easily on the Dead Sea. Even if you do not know how to swim, you will float. Well, how does that happen? This is because the Dead Sea contains a lot of salt and the water it has a very high density. Because of that, we can float easily. Well, what is density? That is what we are going to discuss in this video. Well, by definition, density means mass per unit volume of the material. And the formula will be mass divided by volume. I need you to pay attention to the unit. Okay, so when we take the mass, it has to be in gram and for volume centimeter cube. So the final unit for density will be gram per centimeter cube or centimeter to the power of negative 3. There must be a negative here and it is written on the top right hand side. Okay, a little bit smaller. Let's look at one example on how we can calculate the density. This is one example question. The question told us that the mass of a measuring cylinder is 230 gram. This is a, an empty measuring cylinder. There's nothing yet, it's already 230 gram. After 50 centimeter cube of liquid X is poured into it, the mass of the measuring cylinder and the liquid X becomes 320 gram. What is the density of the liquid X? When we get question like this, first, you need to identify what the question wants. The question wants you to uh, look for or to calculate density. So first step, write down the formula first. Okay, so from this formula, we know we need to find mass and also volume. What does the question tell us? Well, the question already told us that the mass of a measuring cylinder is 230 gram, but we do not want to find the density of measuring cylinder. We want to find the density of liquid X. The question did not tell us the mass of the liquid X, but it does tell us that the mass of measuring cylinder plus liquid X will be 320 gram. So can you figure out how we can find the mass of liquid X? I'm sure you can. So we minus the two. Okay, so for the mass of measuring cylinder plus liquid X, 320 gram minus the mass of measuring cylinder. And we will get the mass of liquid X, which gives us 90 gram. So we already have the information here, 19 gram. How about the volume? Let's look for it in the question. Does the question tell you the volume of liquid X? Yes, it's right here, 50 centimeter cube. So after you have collect enough information, we can calculate density by applying the formula. Mass divided by volume. So 90 gram divided by 50 centimeter cube. If you need, you may use your calculator. And we have the answer of 1.8 remember your unit gram per centimeter cube okay you need to write your unit correctly in order for you to score full marks if this question ever comes up okay a question of this type so remember how what is the sop of answering a question like this first understand what the question one write down the formula that you will need then collect the information based on the formula and finally you can apply the formula and have your answer and check for the unit make sure you have the correct unit written down all right 
So how can we determine the density of irregular object? So for, for the density, the formula of density, we know that we need volume. And we know that for regular object, the volume of different shape object, object if they are regular shape, they have their own formula. What if they are irregular? Well, remember in our previous topic, we talk about uh, the water displacement method. So for example, if we want to find the density of this stone, we can weigh it to find the mass and we can use the water displacement method to find the volume. And once we have the mass, excuse me, I'm sorry. Once we have, once we have the mass and the volume, we can find the density. Well, materials with higher density, meaning we have a bigger number, it will always sink to the bottom. Compares to materials of lower density, meaning the, the number is actually smaller, it will float on top. I need you to understand this concept. Okay, once you understand this concept, we will be able to look at the uh, different, different application in our everyday life. For example, ice juice. Okay, if you notice that every time you have ice juice, the juice is at the bottom and the ice cubes will be on top. This is because juice has higher density compared to ice cubes. So ice cube will float and the juice will be at the bottom. So that is the whole concept of density. If the number is higher, if, the, it is, if it is more dense, it will always be at the bottom. Compared to another material, if the number is smaller, meaning if it is less dense, or if it is of lower density, then it will be on top. So here are a list of different materials. We have solids like gold, lead, copper, aluminum, uh, ice, cork, and also we have a few examples of liquid like mercury, seawater, pure water, and petrol and their respective density. So let's see if we have three different liquid in this beaker and I tell you they are mercury, pure water and petrol. How do we know which one is the first layer, which one is the second one, which one is the third one? We can compare their density. Okay, we can compare their density. Let's look at the density of mercury, pure water and petrol. The density for mercury is of the highest number, the biggest number. That means it has the highest density. So mercury will be the one at the bottom. Then let's compare pure water and petrol. Petrol is slightly smaller or it is slightly less dense compared, put, compared to pure water. So we have pure water in the middle and petrol on top. So once you know the density is very easy to identify. How about if we have liquid and also object? Well, the same concept. The one with the highest density will be the one at the bottom. So in this example, it's very easy for us to uh, identify the liquid is definitely water. Okay, so in this beaker, we have liquid and two objects. So the liquid will definitely be water. All right, so and then we know that one of them is copper and the other one is cork. How do you know which one is at the bottom? Well, we compare their density with water. So copper has higher density compared to water and hence copper will sink in water. So the middle one we know is water and the top one is cork because if you compare the density of cork with um, the pure water, Okay, it is a lot less compared to water. That's why it will float. Okay. Oh, now we have three different liquids and three different objects. And they are also highlighted in the red here for you. So when we get questions like this, we solve it one by one. Let's look at the liquid part first. So from the one that is highlighted in the red, we know that the liquid part, we have mercury, pure water and petrol just like the first example so we know mercury is the one at the bottom 13.60 is the density water 1.00 and petrol 0 0.80 okay and then we have three objects that is copper ice and cork 
So let's take a look. So the highest density will be the copper. It is 8.92. So 8.92 is smaller compared to mercury, hence it will float in mercury. But it is bigger compared to 1, the density of water. So it will sink in water. Okay, the next one will be ice okay so ice we have 0 0.92 so it will definitely float in water because it has uh, less or it has a smaller density compared to water but ice has higher density compared to petrol that's why ice will actually sink if we put it in petrol and how about the one on the top it is cork it is the lowest density of all so it will float uh, at the top Okay, so it is actually a very simple concept, isn't it? So in our everyday life, actually, if you pay attention, you can notice the differences in density. For example, this example we looked earlier as well, when we have anything uh, cold to drink and we have ice cube, for example, ice Milo, ice water, ice juice, Ice always float on water because it is less dense than water. So it will float on the surface. And also this beautiful fun balloon. Okay, this type of balloon is uh, filled or it, they contain helium gas. Helium is a type of gas that is less dense compared to the air around us. That's why these balloons will float in the air and then it becomes very funny, don't they? This is a very useful um, concept for density when we use the concept of density to transport timber. Okay, so in this picture, you can see that uh, all this timber, it means these logs, okay, these logs, the timber float on water because they are less dense compared to water. So if they float on water, we can uh, get the help of the current and the river to transport them to another village maybe down the river have you ever seen these fancy drinks maybe three layer tea or layered juice okay so the restaurant operators normally gets very creative when they prepare different types of food and drinks by using the concept of differences in density well that's all from jekutio in this video i shall see you in the next video okay bye if you have learned something new from this video don't forget to like and subscribe